This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is the patriarch of the Manning family, former Ole Miss star and longtime NFL standout quarterback, Archie Manning. The Manning family may not be the first family of football, but they're easily the most well-known and successful family in NFL history. Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl with the Colts and is considered one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the game. Brother Eli has also done pretty well for himself, topping his big brother with two Super Bowl rings, playing for the Giants. But it all starts with Father Archie. The former Ole Miss star may have never won a Super Bowl like his sons, but Archie was a stellar signal caller in his own right playing mostly for the New Orleans Saints, who at the time was one of the league's doormats. Archie and his wife Olivia made the Big Easy their home and started the legacy there. Archie is considered football royalty, and while many who interview him begin with questions about his more famous sons, Archie is as respected and beloved as anyone who has ever laced up the cleats. Today I go round and round with the Manning of the house, Archie Manning, next on Sports Files. Archie, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. We Glad appreciate your great. time. Glad to be here. Congratulations on the, uh, the recent announcement that you'll be a part of the inaugural playoff selection committee. What about that honor? You've done so many things, and now you're a part of that. Well, it, it, is, it is an honor to me um, to be asked. Um, there's 13 people on there, and if you look at some of the people, uh, years and years of people in college experience, um, there's, uh, there's, some there's five athletic directors, uh, all great guys, but a former commissioner, a lieutenant general from the Air Force, uh, Condoleezza, uh, Secretary mm -hmm. of State, um, I think Rhodes Scholar, three college football Hall of Famers. So, so it, it's a privilege. Um, I think we all feel the same way. We've, uh, we've, we haven't met yet. We've got that coming up. We've had a, a couple of press conferences together, our, our conference calls together. We, we all share. Um, a passion for college football. We want college football to, to do good and be successful. This is kind of something new that a lot of people have been asking for, and uh, we want to make it work. Um, I don't, I don't think it's an easy job. No. And uh, and uh, there'll be some scrutiny, but I, I and, but I don't think any of us will stay on too awful long. We'll rotate. It'll be a rotating thing after a few years. So I'm on a. Um, you know, I'm going to make the commitment, to, the time commitment to, to do it and try to do a good job and try to see if uh, every year we can make this final four in football the, the, the best four teams in the country to, to play it off. I would imagine that if somebody who was asked to be on the committee was really a staunch activist against a playoff, they probably wouldn't want to be a part of it. So I'm assuming that you like the direction college football is going? You know, all through the year, I never had – too much of a problem like some people did. Some people just didn't like the BCS at all. I never had that big a problem with it. I think I think most years our uh, true national, the best team in the country was right. our national right. champion. Um, I, I really um, didn't didn't want a lot more extended games for college kids. I didn't think that was necessarily good. But um, the the four team situation, you know, I don't think it's stretching the uh, the. the the college kids uh, year too much in, in football. Uh, I think it's 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 really good. It's not ruining the bowl system. The bowl system is still in place. Right. Uh, so I think every all the compromises that were made uh, are good, and we're go we're going to see. I mean, we're going <laughs> to see see how it shakes out. I hope it'll be. We all love college football, and we want it to be good for college Absolutely. football. Absolutely. Of your many responsibilities and things that you do, and include when you make appearances on CBS Sports and and provide your analysis. Um, Will that continue being a part of the selection committee? Or are you allowed to do that? No, I won't be. Uh, I won't be part of CBS Sports anymore. And that's been a good run for me. I've done it, it ten years, and actually, um, I, I did it two weeks ago. That was my. That was my swan song. I'm. I'm. I, I really could have done a couple more this year, but right. I've got conflicts. Uh, 
slowed down on a little travel this year. So uh, that's really been, you know, Tim Brando was probably responsible for that when Eli got drafted by the Giants for me to, I just did it about four times a year, but yeah, that was a that, that was fun. Uh, Love to be around that. Uh, I think the greatest part was the SEC championship game right. every year. But Greg, um, like I said, th there are no media members on the 13-person committee. Uh, there's a, a former media member, Steve right. Weiberg, is, right. is on there. For, it used to be with USA Today and probably some other people. I know Steve, good guy. And you think that's a good thing, Archie? Uh, that there's not, not, not to have the media. The media. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything against the media, but I think that was their policy. And I think, you know, all the comments I've seen today from media people, um, they approved of the committee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I didn't mention somebody like Tom Osborne, who's in there, Tom right. Jernstedt, who's been involved with the basketball thing for years and years. I just think it's great diversity, right? Yeah, I think it's, it's good around it and, and just talking to everybody. We're all committed to, to do the right thing here and, and make, make it go. So, so hopefully we can. That one thing is uh, I know some people, I got the question already, well, you got five athletic directors there. And I mean, what happens when their school there? Well, mm -hmm. there'll be a re recusal process there, and that's understandable. But the rest of us, certainly, you know, I love my school. I, I love uh, our conference, but we've got to, we check our loyalties at the door for this. This is about You have to do what's fair, right? You got to do what's fair. And you got to do what's fair for the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, the, these kids that are playing on these best, Four teams. They deserve to be there, and it shouldn't, uh, you know, it shouldn't be a loyalty thing from anybody on the committee. Absolutely. And we're all committed to do that. Do you believe down the road the playoff will be expanded, or you got to wait and see? I don't know. Um, I, I like the four, and I know it's a 12-year. Uh, I believe it's a 12-year thing. Yeah, it's so a long commitment, uh, right? I think four. I, just right off the bat, none of us know for <laughs> sure how it's going to shake out, but I think four is a good number. You're involved in so many things. Do you ever get a free second? And if you do get a free second, what do you do? What do you like to do? I, yeah, I get some free time. I love to play golf. I've had a little setback. I had a little back surgery mm -hmm. right here in Memphis, as a matter of fact, this summer. And uh, that slowed me down a little bit. But I'm doing good, bouncing back. Uh, not traveling quite as much. Uh, I, I don't know. It was one time I told Olivia, I'm not sure I do anything real well, so I have to do a lot of different things. You know? so <laughs> I don't know about that. That's kind of my theory. <laughs> Do you ever have, uh, over the years, you and Olivia, when you're trying to figure out, all right, well, well Peyton's playing here and Eli's playing here, we got a conflict, and ever stir up a little controversy in the family? Hey, Pop, why didn't you come to this game? Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing we did when they were in high school and college, we were there, and we just felt it was important to, to be there. And uh, professional ball is a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. you just, it's just hard to go every week, and uh, you don't have to. I think one thing I can remember – a long time ago when I played, it was some parents who came to every game. I'm not sure you don't smother them a little bit doing right, that. You know? right. Now, these, are, these aren't high school kids anymore. Peyton's 37 years old. He's got a family. He's got <laughs> friends coming everywhere. He doesn't need the parents there every week. So we go enough, and we like to see our grandkids. Sure. And um, we do keep it, we keep it even. Uh, Olivia always says if we tilted one way, went to one more than the other, Eli wouldn't notice and Peyton, Peyton would, he'd keep <laughs> up, you know. So uh, we, we keep it even. We don't go to away games. Right. That's, that's right. not fun. We'll make we, it easy we, on yourself, we, too. When you have a child playing quarterback for the opposing team, that's not a good atmosphere. <laughs> so we, I love to stay home. I, I like my TV. I like to watch games on TV. I thought the, the Book of Manning was terrific. I thought ESPN did a great job with the documentary. But what made it was all the tape you had of your kids. <laughs> Archie, how did you find the time to do all this stuff? Well, I just, I had a big old video camera back then, you know, those first came out, big, big old, right. I, I think that's why I got back trouble. Carrie. I looked like, <laughs> you, I looked like you guys. I mean, my camera was bigger than your guys right here and carried it around. I had a full VHS in it, but I just did it. That's one thing Cooper and I have gotten, Olivia, we've gotten hundreds and hundreds of letters and texts and emails. But one thing from uh, some young parents, they said, I'm gonna do more video. I'm gonna make sure I video my kids more. So I, I advocate that. I'm glad, glad I, I did it. I hadn't, you know, I, I just turned all that stuff over to, and let them do it. I hadn't watched it in a long time. What it, did you think of the finished Well, product? when I first saw the first cut, rough cut, I said, yeah, I guess it's okay. I said, I think he got Peyton crying a little more than he's going. <laughs> Did he say <laughs> But anything? he got beat up. Ah, he was all right. You know, Peyton, <laughs> uh, Cooper and his buddies really did. They, they knocked him around pretty good, but I guess they toughened him up. Big brothers do that. Yeah, right? they do that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, look, I'm, I'm one of the guys that had the pleasure to watch you play uh, in the NFL, and I, I thought you had a tremendous career. And it's, I, I know you, the ties you have with New Orleans, but boy, you paid, played on some, I hate to, you know, you know it, some bad teams. If free agency was like it is today back then, would you have left New Orleans and gone somewhere else? Oh, it's hard to say. The game was different. I, I, I had some people advise me to leave, but, you know, we were constantly changing. About every three years, we'd change coaches. And every time we changed, I always felt this is, this is kind of going to be the right chemistry and the right combination. And when you're, when you're somewhere for a while and you're losing, and you know it's going to get better one day. One day, it's, this is going to be the right chemistry. I kind of wanted to be there for it, so right. I just kind of hung in. I, I could have asked to leave, I guess, but I kind of wanted to hang in there. I, I don't regret it. You know, we didn't. I didn't see the brightest side of pro football, but I got to do it and I got to play it a long time. That's what I wanted to do as a kid. My uh, my my children have been fortunate enough to play in really good organizations and on successful teams, so I'm happy about that. I still can't believe you guys at Ole Miss came back as alums. And play tackle football. No, I can't either. But that, that what was very, that all about? That wasn't smart. Uh, he was actually a good buddy of mine right here in Memphis. George Lauderhaus is one of the most active guys we have in our M Club, and as it was his idea, I, and he talked he talked us all into it. He talked Billy Brewer, the coach, and letting us do it and everything. And George came out there that day. I, he was all taped up and spat up. I told Coach Fault, I said, "You didn't play George enough up here. He, you should have played him more. He didn't, he didn't get enough." But it was we. Um, uh, it was crazy uh, to see it watching watching the Book of Manning. I was like, "What are these guys doing?" But dangerous. Of all the great moments you've had at Ole Miss, what what's the one maybe that stands out? Um. I think the greatest individual honor I've ever had was when I was named the quarterback at Ole Miss. I, I grew up in Drew, Mississippi, 80 miles from right. Oxford, watched great football teams under Coach Vault, great teams in the, in the late 50s and mm -hmm. 60s, and, and, um, and they had good, really good quarterbacks. And whoever the quarterback was at that time, that was my hero. And um, so I had a bunch of them. And, um, that was my dream, and that was my goal to be a quarterback at Ole Miss. So, um, the summer of uh, 1968, when Coach Vaught announced that I was going, he'd never had a sophomore quarterback. Right. And to, that, that still, that was that was the greatest thrill I ever had. I, I cherish uh, uh, the the three years I played there, in varsity football, and the, the teammates, the coaches I played under, and uh, just that whole time, it was special. Amazing memories that you'll you'll, you'll never forget. Let's talk about the quarterback position today. Mm -hmm. you, you watch Eli and you watch Peyton and they're, they're prototypical quarterbacks. And we still have a lot of those. But now we have these read option quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. We have these multi-dimensional quarterbacks in college that are dual threats. What do you think about the evolution of the quarterback position? Well, it's, it's more good quarterbacks than ever. You know, we see it, Greg. We have a, we've had a football camp down in South Louisiana right. for 17 years. And we really started it to help quarterbacks, to help help quarterbacks become better passers because at that time this was a time when Peyton had just come out of high school and down in South Louisiana nobody was throwing the ball mm -hmm. and you, you'd get beat 35 to 3 and you wouldn't throw but five passes right. so Peyton you know Peyton was at Tennessee and he said let's start this camp we got to help kids get better mechanics and throw work out more in the offseason so they can throw the ball more well we're not taking credit for it, but what we see in our camp now is phenomenal. All these quarter, we have about 900 quarterbacks that show up, and they're just so much better. I think Texas had a lot to do with it. They kind of started the the, the seven on seven camps right. all over the country has a lot to do with, it. but also just the the offensive people behind the, this this spread offense and the read option. And I was watching the A and M Ole Miss game the other night from up uh, in a box with R C Slocum who was a great college coach, Hall of Famer, but he was talking about, we were looking down there how they spread out. I mean, they're just receiver on this sideline, receiver on this sideline, and three more in, the, in between. Mm -hmm. And he said, gosh, I wish, you know, I wish we'd <laughs> all been doing that by that. I, I, I wish we had too. I would have loved to play in that, right. that type of offense. But, so it's wide open football. The quarterbacks are um, getting more e exposure, throwing the ball in practice. Uh, they seven on seven camps in the summer. They're throwing more in the games, and as a result, they're sending better passers uh, into the national football. They're more in college, better mm -hmm. passing in college football. They're sending more into the national football league. What do you think of Manziel? He's fantastic. You just you can't hem him up. You just can't. he's quick, throws the ball well. Uh, he plays in a great system, great coaching. 
<laughs> you just, he's, some, he's a tremendous football player. Archie, if you were Mark Emmert, switch places, and you could change one thing about college football, what would it be? If any- uh, oh, I, I don't know about structurally from, from his job. If, if I could change one thing about college football, I could, it would kind of get in some, a lot of kids' heads is kind of enjoy this journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best players, the best athletes get to college, and they're in a dead sprint to get out and go to the NFL. And it is absolutely, should be the best four years, three years, whatever. It should be the best four years of their life. I agree. And, and, and playing college football, college football is a great institution and, and to you know kind of smell the roses wherever you are and the traditions that are there, the players that played before you and the, and the uh, fanfare on Saturday afternoon, everything that goes into it, kind of slow down and enjoy that. I agree. I like to end all my interviews with something I call five for the road. So quick answers to these five questions. Yeah. First thing that comes to mind, this is a tricky one here off the bat because you have two sons playing on professional teams and you played on professional teams. But what is your favorite pro sports franchise? It doesn't have to be football. Um, my daughter-in-law is pretty attached to the Grizzlies. I saw where they got named, oh, they yes, got named yes, number is. one franchise. I, I'm I, now, you know, we have the Pelicans there in New Orleans. Right. I'm, I'm a Grizzlies fan too. So you get to a lot of games? Yeah. Uh, no, no. I, no. I, well, I see them when they come to New Orleans. Absolutely. I watch them on TV and their playoff, playoff team. I, I like the Grizzlies. All right. Politically correct in this area yeah. to give that answer. Favorite pro athlete of all time? I think Stan Musial was mm, good my choice. was my. Yeah, he was so classy and uh, so good and just grew up. My dad, you know, I mean, he, he stand the man. Your favorite music. Do you listen to any and what, what is it? What type yeah, of I'm a country. I'm a, I like all the music. Country music? You know, I like oldies and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not too much on on the new stuff. But uh, well, it's an art. Kenny, 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 like Kenny, Ch- Kenny Chesney. Chesney. I love Kenny. Okay. Kenny's a good friend. And, yeah, he's a, he's a football guy, too. Loves yeah, the game. He's, yeah, he loves football. Kenny's, he, oh, he's that's a good choice. Yeah. I mean, country music is big around here, as, as are other genres. Favorite movie of all time? And you can't say Book of Manning. No, no. no. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, shoot. I, so many, so many there. I love uh, Butch Cassidy. Sunday. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a West, I'm a Western guy, but right. oh, I like the, the old funny uh, movies, Fletch, and I, I don't know, my kids uh, love those type of movies, and they remember all the lines and talk, so those movies kind of come back to me, you know, like Animal it. House and Fletch. And, <laughs> there you and, go. Uh, I love the baseball, uh, I love the baseball movies too. Like Field of Dreams and things oh, like yeah. that? Oh yeah, Field, Field the of natural. Dreams, Major League, all yeah, I, I, they're I all love the, the funny ones too. Yeah. Final question for you, favorite uh, TV series, maybe uh, a little pleasure you like when you get a little free time, you pop on the tube, what do you like to watch? Um, I was just talking about that the other night. I don't, I don't have one right now. Olivia, um, I just don't get to watch. Was Olivia get watch? to watch much TV? Is there, I mean, you probably she don't watches. Watch she watches. About, she makes me TV about four different things on Sunday night. I still watch Sunday night football. But she's got all these <laughs> things to watch. She watch on Sunday night. Um, she's probably at home. It's, it's, it's not. My, it's not. I've watched it. They are unbelievable. But my favorite is not Duck Dynasty. It's not, not Duck no, Dynasty. Not, there you go. But it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's amazing what they've done. Archie, congratulations on, on everything, your success, your family, uh, the father you are, the husband you are. And thank you so much oh, for joining my us. Fix. Thanks for having me, Greg. Thank Glad you, Archie. Thank you. Next Wednesday, eight of the world's longest drivers will hit the tee box at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for a live telecast of the REMAX World Long Drive Championship Finals. And I'm not talking cars here. When it takes place, the Mid-South will be represented by Collierville's Will Hogue. He's a former standout baseball player at Houston High School and at Austin P. University. The $200,000 winner-take-all event will be broadcast on the Golf Channel. And win or not, Hogue, who's been competing in the sport for only a year or so, will receive some incredible exposure. Recently, I spoke to Will and got his thoughts about the competition and his future in the sport. 
Well, Will, congratulations. Uh, your first full year of competing, long drives, and you're in the, the world championships. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, it feels great. You know, I mean, it's definitely uh, put a lot of hard work into this this year, so it's nice to see that it's paying off. Why the decision to start competing on a competitive basis? Um, honestly, I was out playing golf with my dad. I hit a ball 405 yards, and he said he'd pay for me to try one, so I said okay, and uh, hadn't turned back yet. So. When did you start playing golf, and then when did you start going after the ranges and, and, oh. and realizing you can hit the ball pretty far? I grew up playing golf. Uh, I played out at Wendyke Country Club. Uh, the Garners were nice enough to let me on their course. Know them well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was out playing. I was always a pretty long guy. I hit my first 300-yard drive when I was in fifth grade, uh, so 10 or 11, whenever that is. Um, Never really was much of a golfer, but could always hit it a pretty long way. So. Well, you're a baseball player, played at Houston, oh, right. Austin P. So are there similarities to the baseball swing and the golf swing? Uh, I think a lot of, uh, there are a lot of similarities. I mean, the, the swing is fundamentally the same. Uh, there are some, obviously, some major differences like the plane and, you know, you don't want to arm bar in baseball, but you do in golf. So there are some differences too. I know a lot of people want to know what type of club do you use and is the club that you use in the long drive competition something that's legal on the PGA Tour? Uh, I use a crank. It's a basically a long drive company, I and mean, this is kind of what they specialize in. As far as the club head, yes, you could use this on the PGA Tour. It's not uh, extra hot. It's not hopped up. There's nothing like that. Now, my shaft is going to be a little longer than your standard PGA club. So technically, no, I'd have to cut this one down a little bit. But right. if I knocked it down right. an inch or two, yeah, I could use it on the Tour. What has your swing speed been measured at? Uh, the highest I've gotten is in the 150s. Wow. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know how high I can get because if you swing out of your shoes, you might miss the ball. Sure. So. You don't want to be embarrassed. This is on not only national TV on Golf Channel, but this is live. Are you ready? <laughs> Are the nerves going to be in check for um, this thing? You know, at the end of the day, it's just another golf shot. I mean, it's the same thing I've done 100,000 times this year. You go out there and you take a golf swing, and so. I'm hoping when you get up there and you feel the pressure, you can just go back to your the zone that you get in the same way that I practice. Forget the cameras, forget everybody else, and just make a golf swing. It'll take place, uh, as you know, at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Can you explain to folks briefly how it works? How many swings do you get? And obviously, you got to keep it within the grid. Well, the, yeah, the grid at the Motor Speedway is 50 yards wide. Uh, we'll be hitting off an elevated tee, which will be interesting because we've never done that before. Yeah. Um, so uh, the 50-yard grid is pretty tight. Normally, it's 60, so they've narrowed it down by 10 yards. Uh, we'll have two minutes and 45 seconds to hit six balls, and your longest ball that stays in in the grid is the score that you get. Started with nearly 200 competitors, and, and you're down to eight. What was the drive? What was the distance that got you into the, the championship? Um, well, you know, I, I don't – actually, I think the distance – my longest was 431, but I think the last round I got through with was 378. So, you know, there's more than one round. It's not just you go out there, you hit six balls, and hope for the best. There's – I think I made it through about eight rounds to get to where I got to. I, I, I thought you just said 431 yards. I think something's <laughs> wrong with my ear. Uh, yeah, 431, that's, uh, that's my personal best, and that was I actually hit it out there in Mesquite this year. So um, but looking to go farther at the Speedway. What is the longest drive on record? Oh, gosh. I mean, how far can these guys hit it? I don't know what the longest one on record is. I know Ryan Winters hit one 530 before. Um, but I don't know what the so, longest So what is. do you think, uh, and it's a little bit of a thin air in Vegas, although it's not, it's not, it's down in, in, uh, in uh, the valley. It's not a, uh, a mountainous region, I don't believe. I mean, there's mountains around it, but I think you're, you're not there in the mountains. So I don't know if you get the elevation from, uh, from the air, but what usually will win this thing? What, what's the number you're um, looking at? You know, that, that varies tremendously with the conditions. The wind blows mm. hard in the desert. So if the wind's behind us, it could be massive. If the wind's in our <laughs> face, it could be 320 yards. I mean, it just, uh, it all just depends on what the conditions are. Do you like the fact that it's winner take all? 200 grand to the winner, the loser can go buy I a mean, beer. You know, it's a, <laughs> no one's going out there for second place. We're out there to win, so that's fine. You have another job. This is not a full time thing, but if you continue to do this and maybe uh, get into the prize money at a number of events, I mean, how lucrative can it be? I mean, the goal is obviously to, to be able to make this a career. Very few people can. You have to pretty much win the world championships for it to become a career. So um, it, it certainly can be if you win. Is uh, it is it very expensive? Do you have the backing of, of people? Oh, it's definitely expensive. Uh, fortunately, my dad was able to support me and help me out. And now I've got some sponsors who are able to take care of my equipment. And uh, the equipment is extremely expensive. So. All right. I know people also want to know, what do you normally score 
for 18 <laughs> holes of golf? Um, I'm not terrible. I'm I'm mid 70s to low 80s. I'm not I'm not great, but I'm not. I can't putt. <laughs> that, I was gonna say. So the problem's the short game, right? right? I can't putt. Well, Will, congratulations. Just being in the finals is absolutely amazing. Eight out of 200, or just about 200. Bring home the championship to, uh, to Collierville and Memphis. Thank you so much, Will. Thank you. Next Wednesday will be an extremely busy day on the local sports scene. Besides Will's attempt to win the World Long Drive Championship, the Grizzlies will open the regular season as they meet the Spurs in San Antonio in a rematch of last year's Western Conference Finals. And in football, the Memphis Tigers will look for their first American Athletic Conference win when they host Cincinnati in a rare midweek game. And that'll do it for now. Remember, you can see any of our previous shows by heading to our website, WKNO.org, and clicking on KNO Tonight. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.